bang. Neves Knives, I'm Jared, and today we are checking out the TKEL, the new TKEL MR1, the MRs for Marine Raiders. We're going to talk about what it was designed for and all the details here in one second. They did send me an awesome little driver. I think this is really cool. I'm sure you can find it on their site, but it makes it where you can switch your bit and then also lock it in place and use it as a keychain so you always have your bit. So the, the clips, I love the way they're doing the clips. They have a bunch of different styles. So this one will go inside the pocket if you do want to carry inside the pocket and you can carry it left or right hand carry. Now, this one is one of their new ones. It's 3D printed and it's very, very well made. Um, I forget the name of the plastic, but it seems pretty rigid and it adjusts up and down so you can decide how high or low you want to carry it in left or right hand carry. So really cool. And then this one's going to be inside the, the belt. So, or sorry, inside the, so you can tuck it. So you can tuck it inside your, your pants and then this will hook around to the belt so that, you know, it can trap it when you go to pull it out. It's not going to pull out with it. So a lot of options here. And then to put them together or adjust them, they do send you a card. Um, I have a couple different ones here for different clips and they show you how to adjust them, how to use them and, you know, so on and so on. So lots of versatility, which I think is very, very awesome. You kind of get to choose how you want to carry it and what, what you're most comfortable with. Lots of really cool stuff coming from T. Kelly. 100% USA made. Every nut, every screw, every string, everything. USA made, 100%. Gotta love that. Now, 51%, now 90%, 100%. Now, their sheaths, really good quality. I gotta give them credit for their sheaths because... Man, they've really stepped it up. No rattle, no tap. It's very secure. It feels good. Nice push-off point. Now, the Marine Raider was designed to be used in a Pical grip. So, this is the way it's designed to be held, is in the reverse grip, you know, like clawing. And then does have a little attitude adjuster, which we're going to talk about what this would actually do to you here in one second. From somebody who has been hit by brass knuckles and things like that in the past. But... I personally like it in the forward grip, kind of like a clinch pick. So what I do is I like to take my hands like this and yank it out like that. So I have it in the forward front of my belt and I can wrap my hands around it and I can pull downward and now I can claw backwards. But I like it in both grips. So not saying that this one isn't good because this is very natural for me, but recently I've been uh, working with a little bit more of the clinch picks and, and I kind of like the idea behind them. You know, you can get a little more distance holding it like that. You can claw, you, you know, if somebody's arm wraps around you or somebody's attacking you from the side or whatever, it's very easy to get them off of you. And it's very difficult to stop you from grabbing the knife because it's placed in the front by your buckle. So it's so easy to, to get to, even if you're being attacked. So you get it out and you can go to work. Um, now going back to the standard grip, the Pical grip, the way it was designed to be made or designed to be held, you know, it is very comfortable. It works really good. It's not double edged. So it's only single edged. Um, but it is, it's nice and comfortable. It feels very solid. And the blade steel on this is AEBL, which I personally love. I love AEBL. Now, I'm not a big fan of AEBL on folding knives, but on fixed blades, I do. Now, as much as I love AEBL, the one steel that I think could have been even better would be 14C28N. And it derives from AEBL. So it's basically just like a souped up AEBL. And the reason why I like it better is one, it does hold an edge a little bit better, but two, which is even, which is very important to me is how it takes an edge. So AEBL seems to take a toothier edge better while 14C can take a finer edge. And both of them take very low angle edges very well, but I've just noticed that, you know, for an extreme amount of bite, from the apex like the stickiness 14c is just like it's so much better but that's not saying aebl is an awesome i love aebl for fixed blades chef knives um these type of knives you know and anything basically fixed blade related now um let's go back to this ring really quick let's talk about it so what is this going to do if you hit somebody with it, right? Like, I've never trained with none of these. I've never been hit by one of these. But I have been hit with brass knuckles. I've been hit with bottles in the face. I, I've had things like that. And it's going to cut you, right? It's going to cut you and it's going to make you bleed. So it's more of a deterrent. 
but it, it's not going to stop you. It's n- I've never, like, even when I had a bottle smashed over my face, I, it still didn't stop me. You know, yeah, it messed me up. Yeah, I was bleeding. Yeah, um, you know, my, my, my eye was hanging off or my, my eyebrow was hanging off. But it didn't stop me from fighting. And, you know, it, it was more of just an inconvenience. Right. And that's kind of like what this is going to do. If you get hit with it, yes, it's going to split you open. Now you're hoping that just the, the sight of blood will make somebody stop, but it's not likely, but it is possible because once people see blood, they know they're injured. They kind of back off, you know, but in the instance that you do have to use that part and you do, it might be just a way for you to get them to put their hands up. You know, or to uh, to maybe back up for a second or to give you a little bit of room or a little bit of timing so that you can actually take a good shot. Uh, but, you know, it is, it would be effective in the sense that it's going to cut you, it's going to split you open, but it's not going to stop somebody. It, I promise you it won't knock them out or anything like that. It's going to cut them. Um, even with brass knuckles, you know, um, I was hit. Well, I've been hit twice, but, uh, but the one time it, it just cut me, it just cut me open. The one time it did, uh, I got hit, I didn't get hit in the head. I got hit in the arm and it, uh, basically made my whole arm swell up and bruise, but I, you know, it didn't matter. Um, uh, but the time in the head, <clears throat> it, it did cut me open, but I honestly, I wasn't even sure I got hit by brass knuckles at first. You know, you just kind of think you got hit. You don't even realize you're cut. You know, because your adrenaline's pumping so hard, you know, and that's why it, it's almost like the things that you think are very effective when your adrenaline's pumping, they're not as effective. They're just not. They, they, you, you have so much, um, so, so much energy and your heart race is going, your heart's racing so much that you barely feel anything. You know, even when you're bleeding and you're split open, you're barely, you barely felt what happened. Right. Um, especially when you're fighting for your life. But like I said, not saying that, you know, the, the sight of the blood and the feeling of blood and everything won't uh, scare somebody for sure. And then, you know, the other end of this <laughs> can definitely do damage. So, you know, it's just the, the point of like having a deterrent, maybe to get them to lift their hands up, you know, to protect their face. Then you can go after a different part, you know, whatever. But train with your tools, train with them. Be efficient with them. Know how to to properly hold them. Know how to properly use them. And the thing, if you don't train with this tool that you're going to use, you're you're going to fall back to your instincts of whatever it is, right? And if it's not using the tool effectively, you're not going to use it effectively. You're probably your heart's going to be racing. You're going to be shaking. You're not going to probably. You might even be frozen to some extent, you know, like, like your arms almost feel like they don't work. Like you can't even put pressure. Like it, it's weird what happens when you're, when your adrenaline's pumping, you know, and you're actually fearful of your life. Uh, but so it's very important to, to train and be confident in what you can and can't do. And, you know, when you're actually struggling and if you can get somebody to train with you, you know, um, it can give you an idea of what it's going to be like in, in the mo- in the moves or moments of which when people are going to be doing certain things to you, like the way they're going to do them. What are, where are they going to attack in this position? Like what is the little tricks that they can do so that you can be prepared and ready to defend said trick or said you know movement. Anyways, T Kel. Awesome, awesome company. Uh, met him at Blade Show. Seems like such a good dude. Their team seems really cool. I'm going to hopefully see them again here in Atlanta and maybe Texas. Texas Blade Show because that's coming up. And, yeah, I love what they're doing. I love that it's 100% USA made. I love the types of knives that they're doing. I love that they're um, unapologetic about making self-defense knives and, and you know, purpose-driven knives. So, shout out to them. And, yeah, definitely go and check them out. I will link it down in the description. It's not an affiliate link, but I do link it down in the description because they are kind enough to send me the knives. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.